Today we are going to answer the age-old question. Die Hard. Christmas movie or action movie that happens to take place at Christmas time. Christmas movie, and here's why. Because all great Christmas films are about healing relationships, family reconciliation, falling in love, and hope for the future. And Die Hard is about all of those things. Is Daddy coming home with you? Well, we'll see what Santa and Mommy can do, okay? That is true. It just takes a bloodier, way more awesome road to get there. Oh, yeah! And it's still less violent than Home Alone. <laughs> or as I like to call it, Die Hard for Kids. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker and I'm just a fly in the ointment, Alan. A monkey in the wrench. And I am Alan Seawright. And now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho. <laughs> Today we're going to be taking a look at Die Hard, the 1988 classic, from a different perspective. It's actually a really solid guide at how to reconcile with your partner. I absolutely agree. It is also one of, if not the, greatest action movie ever made. First of all, if you haven't seen Die Hard, what are you doing with your life? Watch it right now. Yeah, there's a link down below. Rent it, buy it, come back, watch this episode. Die Hard. It's the greatest. Now, for those of you who are going to refuse to do that, so they're not lost, what's the gist of the film? What's the 10 peso version? John McClane is a cop from New York. I'm a cop from New York. Estranged from his wife. Change your idea of what our marriage should be. I don't think be. you have a clue as to what my idea of our I marriage should exactly be. I know exactly what your idea of our marriage should be. Visits her in LA, goes to her company Christmas party. Uh, after he arrives there, some terrorists show up. John McClane is barefoot, wearing a tank top, <laughs> and has to defeat uh, a whole building full of terrorists. Better make you call your pants down, huh? <laughs> it is the greatest. It's a masterpiece. It is, it really is. While we're going to be talking about couples reconciliation, you'll forgive us if we indulge in the occasional action sequence. It's just too awesome. So let's dive in. So John is riding from the airport in the limo that was sent to pick him up to go to his wife's Christmas party. He's gonna try and reconcile with her. She's been in LA, he's been in New York. But John's sitting up front with the limo driver because John does whatever the hell he wants. Telephone, full bar, VHS. Just a working class guy. Never been in a limo before. Trot. Know a few mama bears we can hook up with. Or is he married? He's married. Okay. So one of the things that people Sorry, complain about is how John, you know, throughout the movie is <laughs> constantly looking at attractive right girls, but he also obviously is, you know, being faithful to his wife mm -hmm. here. Why'd you come with her, man? What's up? Because I'm a New York cop. I got a six-month backlog in New York scumbags I'm still trying to put behind bars. I can't just pick up and go that easy. In other words, you thought she wasn't going to make it out here, and she'd come crawling up back to you, so why bother to pack, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, you're very fast, aren't One thing about John McClane is he is imperfect. He is our hero, but he's got he's got human flaws, and in this case, he's kind of been a punk. Yeah. Kind of been a punk to his wife. So he arrives at the office building, and uh, he's going to look for his wife in the directory, Hi. and he's going to see. Good evening. I'm here to see Holly McClane. Just type it in there. Look at that. Amazing tech. <laughs> Audiences in 88 were like, whoa! Yeah, you'd have to take a leak. It'll even help you find your zipper. Touch screens in 88. Ooh. Oh, no McLean. No Wally McLean. Christ. We don't know what Gennaro means. Yet, we don't know that that's his wife's maiden name. Without showing you the past history of everything, she would rather be known as who she was before she married him. Yep. And that, to me, it speaks volumes about how far they've, they've fallen and how far, how distant she's pulled away from him and how much she wants to establish her own individual identity, right? And, uh, you know, the, the McLean slash Gennaro's are not in a good place. <laughs> Definitely Actually, not. Actually, it's kind of sort of a double celebration. So he's up here. Uh, up at the Christmas party waiting for his wife, meeting her co-workers. They haven't seen each other for six months. John. 
Great performance there by Bonnie Bedelia and her eyes just. Uh -oh. been sticking with spears. <laughs> of course he has. Well, and a great look from Bruce Willis, too. That's relief and love and a little bit of disappointment that, like, why yeah. is your door say generic? Show him the watch. <laughs> Ellis. Ellis. Well, go on, show him. What, are you embarrassed? It's just a small token of appreciation for all our hard work. It's a Rolex. <laughs> I'm sure I'll see you later. <laughs> so John and Holly just had their first interaction in front of people, but let's see what happens behind Ellis, closed doors. Yeah, to when they get together in private. He thought he was God's greatest gift, you know? Yeah, I know the type. I think he's got his eye on you. It's okay, I have my eye on his private bathroom. Where are you staying? Things happened so fast, I didn't get a chance to ask you on the phone. Cappy Roberts retired out here. Oh, yeah? He told me I could bunk in with him. He wasn't he assuming retired, he'd stay huh? with her. No. Where does he live? Ramona. <laughs> Pomona. 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 Is he yeah. from New York? Because he does New York really well. He is from New York. Far half the time. Why don't we make it easy? I have a spare bedroom. I mean, it's not huge or anything, but kids would love to have you at the house. They would have. Tries to make it about them. Doesn't want to be vulnerable yet. She lets her guard down. I would too. There it is. Come on. Yep, and that's an 80s Christmas party. Just looking for a space. And that 80s hair, can that come back? I missed you. I love that she's finally, she's trying here. Yeah, she really is. And he got too angry and too hurt to meet her there. I guess you didn't miss my name though, huh? Except maybe when you're signing checks. Since when did you start using Ms. Gennaro? The Japanese company. They figure a married woman's got You are a married woman, Holly. You're married to no, me. We're gonna have this Remember conversation again. We did this in July. We I never had finished a, this conversation I had an in July. I had yeah, to take right. it. Right. No matter what the consequences, no what? matter what it did to our marriage, it you had to take it. It didn't do anything to our marriage except maybe change your idea of what our marriage. I don't think be. you have a clue as to what my idea of I our marriage should exactly. be. I know exactly what your idea of our marriage should be. Not listening to each other, just talking over each other. Excuse me. Um, Mr. Takagi is looking for I mean, you. Holly did get vulnerable something. for a second, but then the walls went right back up as soon as he didn't let his down. Yeah. The moment he got critical. Speech time. Because he was trying to control that her through things. criticism, and he knows it, because here's where he... I love this. This is fantastic. He hates himself for it. That's great, John. Good job. Very mature. <laughs> so one of the one of the traits of John McClane is that he talks to himself. Yep. Right? Which for a lot of characters that doesn't work. It's a terrible trope. Bruce Willis and the writing, like John McClane is so much fun when he talks to himself throughout this entire picture. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Yeah. But here you see the reality of a lot of times when we act like if I act like an ass in an argument with my wife, I know I've acted like an ass. Oh yeah, immediately. I do the same thing that John McClane does. I'll hit my head on something like, real mature. Good yeah, job. good job. And so step number one for reconciling, right? For for couples reconciliation is to look in the mirror. And John's literally, I mean, this is nice, this is nice uh, filmmaking yeah. here. He's literally looking in the mirror while he's chiding himself for his behavior because he has to start with him. And he tried to start with her. Here's something you're doing that I don't like and I'm gonna call you out on it. And we think, well, if I do that, then they're going to fix it or they're going to know how I feel. And, and then the problem will go away because you, I fixed it. But you nailed it. Her walls went right back up. Yep. She tried after six months to reconnect with him. And the first thing he does is criticize her for not taking his last name. And, well, and it seems like it's reigniting a previous argument, right? My, yeah. The assumption is, the context here is, they had this exact same argument when she took the job six months ago. Yeah. And he says, we never finished this conversation. And she says, you never listened to me. It was done then. And this is how you do exposition without it feeling like exposition. Exactly. Because we know everything we need to know from this moment without it being like laid out on a platter, without a flashback. Like it's all just in this conversation. It's a, it's a 90 second scene that is an argument. And it tells us everything we need to know about her, about him. It's, it's brilliant filmmaking. It's spectacular writing. This reminds me of couples therapy oftentimes 
early on, not later, but early on when couples start fighting, I will sit there. <laughs> Where's my popcorn? I will sit there and basically when couples are fighting, I will do this. And I'll just sit there and watch them fight. Speaking of which, I got birthday cake white chocolate. Why? Because it makes me happy and Die Hard makes me happy. That's the only reason. What do you I got? got? Raspberry Dream because uh, it looks like it's covered in blood <laughs> and we'll get there. You got me. A lot of blood in this me. Passion for popcorn. But I'll sit there and I'll let couples fight because you can learn a lot about them from how they fight. Now later on that's not productive, but awesome, awesome stuff. Action break! Die hard! Die hard! Welcome to the party, pal! Die hard! Die hard! Hey, are you back on the business now? Die hard! <laughs> so terrorists have taken over the building and John is doing guerrilla warfare to fight back, protect his wife, save the hostages, things like that. And uh, they keep trying to kill him. And as per the title, Die Hard. He is difficult to kill. Very hard to kill. So here comes a terrorist coming in, reacting to the fact that they still haven't killed John McClane yet. Meet Carl. Just your happy, friendly, stereotypical German. <laughs> God, that man looks really pissed. <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> what? Only John can drive somebody that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best spouse mic drop line in film history. <laughs> Come at me in the comments. So what's beautiful about this is Holly's recognizing something. When we love somebody, it's their sides of a coin. The things that you love about them are, it's just the other side of the coin are the things that drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm married to somebody who's very driven and motivated, I'm likely also married to somebody who can be kind of callous or blunt. If I'm married to somebody who's tender and sensitive and warm, I'm usually also married to somebody who is oversensitive or takes offense easily, right? There's, it's, it's size to a coin. And Holly's been thinking about how stubborn John is and how, how bullheaded he is and how just obnoxious he is. There are rules for policemen. Yeah. That's what my captain keeps telling me. And these are the very things that are saving the day. Like these very traits are saving the day. And she's recognizing there's a side to this that I love. And so when she says only John can drive someone that crazy, she doesn't say it with annoyance. That's how the line is delivered, right? She's oh yeah, the, the line is delivered like tenderly and lovingly and, and with, you know, a sense of relief that like, oh good. <laughs> and so so the second thing is to appreciate the differences. A lot of couples, like I have couples break their differences into categories. They're, they are deal breakers, things you tolerate, and things you appreciate. And a lot of people have things in the deal breakers that actually should be in the tolerate. Right. And things in the tolerate category that actually should be in the appreciate category. So appreciating the differences is key. And in really unhealthy relationships, they have appreciate that should be deal breakers. I've killed people before. Run! It does not matter. Why? I am a murderer. Fine. <laughs> we talk about the Twilight films on this channel. Watch those. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Action break! <laughs> Die hard! Die hard! Die hard! Shoot the glass. You just burst a blood vessel in your <laughs> eye. You look like you're in Die Hard now. John is barefoot. <laughs> just switch your toes. All that glass has just been broken. His feet are bleeding. He's now in the bathroom, and now he's starting to actually doubt he's going to make it out. He's really thinking he's going to die, yeah. He's going to have Sergeant Powell relay a message to his wife and uh, pay attention to what he says and how he says it. Powell. Yo, pal, you got a minute? I'm here, John. Listen, man, I'm starting to get a bad feeling up here. I want you to do something for me. Um, <clears throat> I want you to find my wife. Don't ask me how, by then you'll know how. Uh, I want you to tell her something. I want you to tell her that... Um, 
<laughs> Daughter, it took me a while to figure out uh, what a jerk I've been. But, um, that. That when things started to pan out for her, I should have been more supportive. And, uh, I just should have been behind her more. This is the scene that made Bruce Willis a movie star. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's the action that is this. That, um, that she is the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me. She's heard me saying I love you a thousand times. She never heard me say I'm sorry. And I want you to tell her that, Alan. I want you to tell her that uh, John said that he was sorry. Okay? You got that, man? Yeah, I got it, John. But you can tell her that yourself. You just watch your ass and you'll make it out of there. You hear me? Well, so John McClane is a very macho, masculine character. And here he's actually taking a very big step into vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's beautiful. And it's, it's one of the things that is needed to make things right with your partner is taking ownership. John here is completely humble, right? He's not, a lot of times we take, we, an apology looks like, I'm sorry, and then a hard left into blaming the other person. Yeah. Right? I'm sorry that I did this, but you shouldn't have done that, and that's why I did this. Instead, he just says, look, I should have been behind her more. Yeah. I, I, should, I should have been more supportive. She's the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me, and I love the line. She's, she's heard, heard me saying, say, I love you a thousand times. But she's never heard me say, I'm sorry. And the thing we should take away from this, I mean, John, he's awesome. He's kind of an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Like, like relationship wise, he's a great cop and he's great at plucking off terrorists, you know, but he's, but when it comes to his marriage, he's, he's an idiot. Now to John's credit, he knows this, right? But mm. don't wait until things are dire. Don't wait till you're pulling glass out of your feet and people are dying to take ownership and to be vulnerable and to apologize, right? That, uh, you can do it so much sooner and then actually change the behavior. And we're going to see, you know, what we learn from this. This is not just a deathbed apology. John actually makes changes. Action break. We are both professional. Die hard? This is personal. Die hard? Uh... Die hard? <laughs> Die hard! Oh! You should have heard your brother squeal. The fourth thing that we're going to talk about actually isn't about John. It's about Holly. So we're going to watch this clip of Holly, and then we're going to talk about it. But Holly has been tasked with actually confronting the villainous Hans Gruber and giving the hostages lists of demands so that everything can be okay and chill there. And this is such a brilliant scene that tells us a lot about Holly. One of the things I love about this scene, too, a lot of people consider Hans Gruber, the villain in this movie, to be the greatest movie villain of all time. This scene is one of the reasons why, because he actually shows some humanity and like is not just a cartoon villain the entire time. Yeah. He's reasonable, he's measured, he has a bit of a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. It's a brilliant performance from Alan Rickman, really strong writing, and- Bonnie Bedelia is- Bonnie Bedelia is just crushing it. Yeah. I have a request. What idiot put you in charge? You did. When you murdered my boss. The backbone now on her. He's looking to me. Personally, I pass on the job. I don't enjoy being. Well, and the immediate course. anger from him, and then she makes the joke, and he cracks it. He softens. I don't like being this close to you. He respects her. Yep. Go on. We have a pregnant woman out there. Relax, she's not due for a couple of weeks. He rolls his eyes Sitting like... Sitting on that rock isn't doing her back any deal with this. So I would like permission to move her to one of the offices where there's a sofa. No, but I'll have a sofa brought out to you. Good enough? Good enough. And unless you like it messy, I'd start bringing us in groups to the bathroom. Yes, you're right. It will be done. Was there something else? There are flaws in his plan. You know, he hasn't no, thought about taking you. care of the hostages. 
And he's like, yeah, fair point. Mr. Takagi chose his people well, Mrs. Gennaro. Miss Gennaro. Oh, man. In that scene, I'm like, she's as cool as John is. Oh, it, more so. Like, <laughs> John wouldn't handle that situation no. that well. He no. wouldn't. He'd end up in some kind of awesome action thing by the end of it, but he wouldn't handle it that well. He'd freak out and be dumb. Yeah, he would. He would. And she so shows herself as cool, calm, and collected. So to me, when it ta we're talking about couples reconciliation, is part of it is you have to take care of yourself. A lot of times, we want our partner to take care of us and to and to take care of all of our needs, and that's just not realistic. Because no. they got their own crap they're dealing with. They got their own emotions. They got their own fires they're putting out. And so part of being in a healthy relationship is I'm counting on you, but I can't count on you for everything. Mm -hmm. And Holly just steps up like a boss and completely handles this. She literally is the boss now. I mean, and Hans totally responds with respect to it. Yeah. Another thing I love is that Holly refuses to be leveraged by denying her association with John. Right. Right now, Hans doesn't know that they're married. And when she says Miss Gennaro, it is not like before her claiming her maiden name as an act of individuality or defiance to her husband. It is, I'm, I'm keeping a level head and I will refuse to be used as bait. And, you know, again, all of that storytelling is done without her telling the audience. The only clues that we get to that is she looks down, we see the picture that has been put down with John's face on it. Mm -hmm. And then her line and delivery, which when she turns to him and says, Miss Gennaro. You know, to Hans, it's just, oh, this is a confident woman mm -hmm. being confident. But we know there's a there's a wink in there. Yeah, it's just a fantastic scene. Action break! <laughs> oh, God, please don't let me die. Die hard! Die hard! Die hard. Die hard. <laughs> so even though Holly tries to conceal her identity as John's wife, the wife of the nemesis of Hans Gruber. Mm -hmm. The fact is Hans finds out and he finds out because the reporter, I forget his name, but he's awful and he's awful in Ghostbusters. So here we're going to see what happens when he outs her without meaning to by trying to pursue his career and blow this story. And he goes and he interviews her family on the TV and we'll see what Hans does here. Okay. Time to gather your flock, Miss Gennaro. You know, your mom and dad are very important people. They're very brave people. So is there something you'd like to say to them if they're watching? Come home. Like mom and dad, who's the dad? Mrs. McLean. Freaking masterpiece. Now she's scared. Not us to make your acquaintance. Them up there and come right back. Okay, so there are outside threats here. Hans is definitely a threat to this family, to this marriage, but so is the reporter. And so part of what we need to do when we're trying to reconcile is to protect our relationship from outside threats. Whether it be a, a flirtatious coworker, whether it be a family member or a friend who's talking smack about your partner or your spouse and trying to drive a wedge between you, there are outside threats aplenty that will threaten to tear you apart. And so the undercurrent here is we're going to see what happens to the reporter and we're going to see what happens to Hans. But in order for John and Holly to be together and to be reconciled, those outside threats have to be dealt with. That being said, I would not personally recommend that you deal with outside threats to your relationship by dropping them off a building or punching them in the face. Or shooting them. Or shooting them. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that to the professionals. So let's see what happens. So Holly's been taken. John's fought his way up to her. Up and down to her, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Happy trails, Hans. <laughs> so 
So here's the watch. That's a Rolex. It's the Rolex. And Ellis was set up as a quasi threat to the marriage. Not a serious one, but he did have his eye on Holly. Yeah. And this is symbolically, you know, this is a threat to the marriage is this watch. So we let go of that. We eliminate Hans. Poor Alan Ro Rickman dropped too early. Drops too early. So his fear is real. <laughs> they were going to give him to a count of three and they dropped him on one. <laughs> But they've eliminated that threat, and... And they get to have the bloodiest, grossest kiss ever. <laughs> but you feel it. You get the warm fuzzies that you should from a Christmas movie. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so this brings us full circle here to the end, where the bad guys have been eliminated, or so we think, and you have to watch the movie. But, but I want you to pay attention to what happens here when it seems that the threat's been eliminated, and they're exiting the building, and what we can pull from this, this last scene here. So they're meeting for the first time. They've been talking on the walkie-talkie this whole movie, these <laughs> new bosom buddies. I love that they see each other and they just know what the other just looks know. like. You can... <laughs> look exactly like you sounded on the radio. <laughs> I love Bruce Willis's noises. How is my wife, Holly? Holly Gennaro. Holly McClain. So what we see here when John says, this is my wife, Holly, Holly Gennaro. Holly Gennaro, yeah. Is that he's walking the walk. Right. That apology he made earlier wasn't just talk. He is supporting her choices. Absolutely. Even the most painful choice for him, that she took her maiden name instead of his name, he is supporting that and he is honoring her. And she, in turn, when she says Holly McClain, she is showing that because you honor me, I'm honoring you, I'm honoring us. She's not taking the name of McLean because he's insisting that she take it. Right. She is making a choice after he made the choice to support her yeah. decision. And when and, and you get you give respect to get respect, and that's how healthy relationships work. Yeah. And when he honors her choices, she honors their relationship, she honors him, she honors his choices. Like Die Hard in all honesty is a blueprint for how to reconcile when your relationship is estranged. It's one of the reasons why this film is so strong is because it's we remember all the action beats and all the great one-liners and stuff, but what carries it through and what sets it apart even from, you know, at least half of its own sequels is that... All of its own sequels. I like the third one. Yeah, the third one's pretty good. <laughs> Doesn't have the strong relationship stuff, though. No, is that they take the time to set this up and there's actually a through line that means something. This is such, it's, it's a masterpiece of screenwriting, of acting, of story structure, and it is a Christmas film because it's about family reconciliation. Now we talked about protecting your relationship from outside threats. Right. John eliminated Hans, but we still got one threat left to deal with. There is still one Mr. threat. Mr. McClain, Mr. McClain, now that it's all over after this incredible ordeal, what are your feelings? <laughs> William Atherton, world's most punchable face. Did you get that? Did you get that? <laughs> so good. This is their idea of Christmas. I gotta be here for New Year's. And then, like so many great Christmas films before, swelling Christmas music. And a true love's kiss. I mean, come on. And driving away into the snow of falling <laughs> debris and ash. papers and debris and ashes. <laughs> like most Christmas films. Yep. That is the choice he made. And I'm going to honor that choice. Because we are movie spouses. So, if you haven't seen Die Hard, there's a link down below to rent or buy it. If you'd like to work on your relationship and reconcile, I have a free 15 minute consultation link down below. You can catch us on our socials. At therapy underscore cinema on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find us on Facebook. Please watch Die Hard. Please watch Die Hard. It's the die hardiest die hard that ever die harded. So until next time. Lady, do I sound like I'm ordering a pizza? Yippee ki yay, mother f of my children. And watch me. movies. Die hard! Die hard! Just another American who saw too many movies as a child. Another orphan of a bankrupt culture who thinks he's John Wayne, Rambo, Marshall Dillon. I was always kind of partial to Roy Rogers, actually. I really like those sequence shirts. <laughs>